Today we'll be considering some the idea of a linear transformation now that we've developed the idea of a vector space so that we can lead up to the Rankinality theorem. So let's begin. We say that a homomorphism or linear transformation between vector spaces V and W over the same field F is defined to be a mapping T from V to W such that it is linear in the sense that T of V1 plus V2 is equal to T of V1 plus T of V2 for all V1 and V2 and V, and that T of AV is equal to A T of V for all A and F and V in V. Let's give a little exercise to try to see how you could write this as one identity. Next, we'll note that a linear transformation from T, T from V to W is called an injective linear transformation. If it is an injective mapping, when view is a, viewed as a mapping between these two sets, that is, between associating elements of V, ignoring the vector space structure, and uh, two elements of W, also ignoring the vector space W. And we call it surjective if it is surjective mapping when viewed as a mapping between these two sets, in the sense that every vector W in big W is covered by, some, by the image of some vector V in V. A linear transformation, T from V to W, that is both injective and surjective, is called an isomorphism between the two vector spaces. That is, we know it's bijective, so another way of phrasing this is we say that an isomorphism is a bijective tran linear transformation. A particularly simple example of one of these is the identity linear transformation from a vector, set, a vector space V to itself, where we define I of V is equal to the vector V for every vector V in V. We denote that two vector spaces V and W are isomorphic by writing V and then isomorphic to W. This is similar to the symbol for congruence found in geometry. We'll note that this actually indicates that there is, there exists some isomorphism between the two vector spaces, but does not specify exactly what it is. There are other ways of doing that. You can check this equivalence relation between two vector spaces, namely that it's reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. The final coming from the fact that a composition of isomorphisms is still an isomorphism. Now to develop the idea of a linear transformation, we can consider the kernel or null space of that transformation. Namely, that the kernel of the linear transformation T from V to W is a subset curve T is the set of all V and V such that T of V is equal to zero. This is a set of V vectors in V, uh, but they're defined by the fact that their image is the zero vector in W. And we see that actually this kernel of T is a subspace of V. Because we consider any, the way we check subspace is checking that the zero vector is inside of it, that the um, sum of two, then that it's closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. So if we take any two vectors, then we get, uh, then we apply the, li the linearity of the transformation. We get T of V1 plus V2. So this is our sum. And we try and show this inside the kernel. T of this is equal to T of V1 plus T of V2. But each of these, because they're in the kernel, give you zero. And zero plus zero is zero. So the image of V1 plus V2 is zero. So V1 plus V2 is inside the kernel. And then you can do the same trick by scaling. And finally, it's a fun exercise to try to prove why the image of the zero vector is always inside the kernel, or why the zero vector is always inside the kernel of any linear transformation. Finally, let's prove a um, let's prove a little lemma, lemma one point nine about linear transformations. That is, for a linear transformation t from v to w. We say it's we will note that it has to be injective when viewed as a mapping between sets, if and only if the kernel of is equal to zero. That is, we know that zero is always in the kernel of T. However, if it's exclusively zero, then that's equivalent to saying that the mapping is injective. Let's proceed in one direction. Namely, we'll note that we have the kernel of T is equal to zero. Then we'll prove that it's injective by going by contradiction, and uh, and we'll just check that if t of v1 is equal to t of v2, I apologize, we're not going to go by a contradiction, we're just going to prove it directly that's injective. We have the kernel of t is equal to 0, and we have that the t of v1 is equal to t of v2 for any two vectors v1 and v2. We then will, uh, we're going to suppose this is true, and we're going to show that this implies that v1 is equal to v2, which will show that's injective. The way we do that is we apply the linearity of t by subtracting t of v2 to the left side, and then factoring out the t in the sense that we 
turning to t of v1 minus v2. Since we subtracted this from this side, what's left on that side is the zero vector. So we get t of v1 minus v2 is equal to zero vector. So v1 minus v2 is in the kernel of t because it's sent, uh, these, that vector gets sent to zero, the zero vector. Therefore, since v1 minus v2 is in the kernel of t and the only element in the kernel of t is zero, it means v1 minus v2 is the zero vector. So we add v2 to x to the right side and get v1 is equal to v2. So t is an injective. For the other direction, let's suppose we have a linear transformation t from v, v to w which is injective. Then we will note that t uh, inverse of the zero vector is a single point of v, and hence that the kernel of t is equal to the zero vector. That is because we know the zero vector is always inside the kernel, and if the pre-image of the zero vector, i.e. the pre-image of the kernel, is just a single point because uh, it's injective, then that single point has to be the zero vector, and you're done. That is, injectivity gives us the pre-image of a single point is a single point, and we know that the zero vector is always in the kernel of t, so that kernel of t is being one point is exactly that point, namely the zero vector. And we have our reverse direction. Finally, let's note that we define linear transformations, and in a natural way of transformations, we should consider the image of the transformation. Namely, the image of a linear transformation t from v to w is a subset t of v, such that t of v, uh, or namely the set of t of v vector, where v vector is taken from v, and this is a subset of w. And in particular, it's a subspace. Um, this is because uh, consider any two elements in the subspace. Then we can write w1 is equal to t of v1 and w2 is equal to t of v2 for some v1 and v2 since they're in since w1 and w2 are in the image. So if we consider w1 plus w2, we can write that as this sum and then apply the linearity in the reverse direction to get this. And therefore, these two are the image of this vector. I'm sorry, this sum is the image of this Im this vector. Therefore. Uh, therefore, the sum is in the image, so it's closed under addition. And for scalar multiplication, we do a very similar proof, except instead of applying sums, we do the scalar multiplication, and then we put it inside the linear transformation. Therefore, it's inside. Uh, clearly, a linear transformation is surjective precisely when its image is the full vector space W. That is, uh, you know, that seems trivial, but surjective means it covers all the elements in the W, and the image is the set of all the things that are covered. So uh, if those are the same, then it is surjective. With that, we're ready to start proving the very important rank nullity theorem. We'll do it a little more abstractly than you might have seen before, but it will be perfectly uh, intuitive. Uh, it'll be intuitive, and it will be very useful for future problems. And here is it if you want to read it for now. Thank you for watching.